Welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the new Metatune plugin from Slate Digital. We'll take a detailed look at some of the basic and advanced vocal tuning features, as well as some of the creative tools such as the vocal doubler. So let's get right into it. To be completely transparent, Slate Digital are sponsoring this tutorial. When they released Metatune, they asked if I'd like to make a tutorial to show people how to use it, and I've been using their plugins for the last five years. I was very happy they've added this to the All Access Pass. So with that done, let's get tuning some vocals. Metatune is an automatic vocal tuning plugin, and you can use it while you're recording and singing or afterwards in the mix, which is what we're going to be doing today. And all you have to do is load it up on the mixer track that you want to use it on, but it's also great if you need to load it up on multiple mixer tracks, and we're going to look into that in a minute. For instance, I have it on the lead vocal track. I have Metatune and a few other effects loaded up here. Before I dive into all the settings, I want to just let you hear what these vocals sound like without Metatune. So I'm going to use the global bypass button here and you can take a listen to these vocals with no tuning. I've been looking all around for you. I've been looking up and down for you now. You ain't coming back around, are you? You ain't coming back down. So you can hear just how sort of sour they sound on some notes. Definitely in need of some pitch correction. Let's turn Metatune on. I've been looking all around for you. I've been looking up and down for you now. You ain't coming back around, are you? You ain't coming back down. That just sounds so much better to me. And what Metatune is doing is just taking the input pitch and depending on how you've configured the settings, it's just correcting it to the nearest note on the scale. So let's quickly reset this plugin and I'll take you through the entire process. The first thing we need to do is of course set a scale so that Metatune knows which keys to correct those incoming notes to. There's several different ways to do this. You can hover here if you know the scale you need. Often samples and instrumentals are labeled with their key or scale. So you can just choose between flats and sharps and select the key you need. If you're not sure which scale you need, there's a few different options for you. So you can press this note button and you can trial different notes playing along with your beat. And if there's keys you know you need, you can simply just add in different notes and then these will be the ones that Metatune will tune to. Or you can hold down major or minor chords to help you try and figure out what scale you actually need. But most of the time, you'll just be selecting the scale you need just like this. And if you have a scale, but for some reason you don't want a note or you want to add in extra notes, that's really simple. You just click on the piano roll and you can adjust it and make it custom depending on your melody. And we're going to use these controls here to decide whether it's going to be a transparent and natural sounding pitch correction or very robotic, fast and hard pitch correction. So let's start with the speed. If we have speeds between 20 and 200 milliseconds, it tends to sound very natural. So let's take a listen to this. I've been looking all around for you. I've been looking up and down for you now. You ain't coming back around, are you? You ain't coming back down. If we start decreasing the speed, so we go from sort of 20 to 0 milliseconds, it sounds very robotic. I've been looking all around. I've been looking up and down for you now You ain't coming back around, are you? You ain't coming back down So you get that classic, robotic, hard and fast tuning sound Something that's important to mention is that there's a big difference between, say, 0 and 5 milliseconds, where there's a little bit less of a noticeable difference between, say, 55 and 60 milliseconds. So the scale is weighted to the top, where you have a lot of control as the milliseconds decrease, and then as you get to the slower speeds, it's a little bit more smooth at the bottom there. Something that's really interesting about Metatune is you can actually go faster than this zero milliseconds time. You can push it into this negative direction. If I just solo in on the vocals on their own, this is an incredibly fast tuning speed. I've been looking all around for you. I've been looking up and down for you now. You ain't coming back around, are you? You ain't coming back down. That sort of speed is not going to suit every project, but it's an incredibly cool creative effect. And I can honestly say I've never heard vocal tuning that is quite that fast, so if you need it, it's there. And I'm sure this could be combined with other creative effects like vocoding to just create completely different vocal textures. So if I can just draw our attention down to this input-output heat map. Along the top, we have the pitch of the input notes, and then on the bottom, we have the notes that they are corrected to. You can see that Metatune is taking some very sort of broad values of pitch for the input. Let's take this B note, for instance. We're going all the way from the top to the bottom of that note. 
and MetaTune is correcting it to the middle of that key center there. So if you're looking for a more transparent sound, you can pull this amount dial down, and this controls how closely MetaTune corrects to the center of that pitch. And you can sort of double click and type in your values just to keep everything precise. Now, instead of correcting to the absolute center of that note, it's just going to correct towards the center. And if you do a lower amount, it's going to sound a lot more loose and higher amounts are going to give you a sort of tighter tuning sound. So I like keeping this around 80 or 90% for a more natural sound. And while we're looking at that input output heat map, I found this particularly helpful either when tracking vocals or uh, in this case, mixing them. I can see consistently whether myself or the singer is above or below uh, the sort of center of a particular key. And this means that you could maybe sort of direct your vocal training at particular keys or particular parts of a melody. So it gives you a pretty good insight into your performance. The next control I want to look at, which is tied to the speed, is the sustain. And this acts on longer notes. So a negative value of sustain, tuning will effectively become slower on longer notes. What this means is that if you have a negative sustain value, it's going to sort of preserve things like vibrato on longer notes. If you have a positive value of sustain, it's actually going to speed up the tuning on those longer notes just to give you an even tighter tuning sound. So if I go to a different part of the vocal and I give it a fast speed of say 10 milliseconds, but a good amount of sustain, you'll hear and see that on the longer notes, the speed just slows down and preserves a little bit more of that human feel in the performance. It don't feel the same like it used to, used to no. Yes, I'm just used to you, babe. You can see that that's all you really need to get going with this plugin. Simply set the scale and adjust these three controls here. But there are some much more cool features that I want to show you, and that's what we're going to look at in the rest of the video. The first is this sort of glowing orb over here. You've probably been wondering what this does. Firstly, if you adjust the outer orb, it changes the amount. And if you adjust the inner orb, that's just a click and drag, it changes the speed. So it's all available just there. The thing I really want to show you though is this vocal doubler. Let's take a listen. It don't feel the same like it used to, used to, no. I guess I'm just used to you, babe. It don't feel the same like it used to, used to, no. I guess I'm just used to you, babe. This lets you double the incoming signal to very easily create backing vocals. So you can control the width of the doubled vocals with this slider here, or by dragging the dot from the left to right. And you can adjust the blend between the dry and the doubled vocals using this slider here. You can see that in the middle, you have a blend between the center and the sides. And at the top, you only have those doubled vocals. If we take a listen with the track, this can do a lot to thicken up your vocals. It don't feel the same like it used to, used to, no. I guess I'm just used to you, babe. It don't feel the same like it used to. Yours to no. I guess I'm just used to you, babe. Honestly, it sounds so good to me, but what I found was really interesting is you don't have to just use this on vocals. You can see here, I've actually run this on a synth pad. I think it sounds really, really good. So let's turn that off. Sounds really, really thick and wide. So just remember that, you know, while this plugin is clearly aimed at vocal tuning, you can sort of break the rules a little bit and do whatever you want with your plugins. Don't stay sort of chained in sort of one mode of thought. Just try all sorts of plugins on all different signals and you might find some really, really interesting results. The next thing we're going to look at is the group feature, which would be easy to overlook, but it's actually a feature that sets MetaTune apart from the competition and will save you an awful lot of time. I'm going to be tuning some backing vocals. There are some simple hums and chants that sound a little bit like this. Hum. Really simple, right? But uh, I have, the problem is I have eight of them. So I've got all of these going to a different track on the mixer and I've loaded MetaTune on each of them. So I've loaded up five instances of MetaTune, each on a different set of backing vocals. And on each plugin, I've just made sure that they're assigned to the same group. So in this case, they're all assigned to group three. Now, if I adjust any of the parameters on any one of these instances, all of these controls will be reflected across each instance of MetaTune. 
And this works whether the plugins are, you know, on screen or whether they're hidden away in the background, of course. Usually what you'd have to do is if you wanted to experiment later, you'd have to open up each instance of your tuning plugin and manually copy across each of these settings. And this might be fine if you've just got, you know, one or two backing vocals. But beyond that, it just becomes incredibly tedious. And it means that you don't really want to try to adjust things and try new settings later. You sort of set it and just forget about it and hope it's fine. But with Metatune, you can just keep adjusting settings further and further into your project. So if you have a new idea, you can just push it into a different direction. I really like when plugins just have simple features that just save you a lot of time and let you just get on with working on your music. And when I started using this groups feature, I honestly couldn't believe the amount of time I've wasted in the past copying settings across from one instance of a plugin to another. And now, well, you don't need to do that anymore. And I should mention along with the groups, if you click up here, you can open the sort of menu here. And this gives you access to the presets, which are very good actually. You can just sort of select your genre here select what you're looking for, and it is sort of a case of set it, pick your scale, and then forget about it. It tends to do the job really well, but you can also access your groups. So from here, you can keep track of what's in each group. For instance, I've got some background vocals in group two and a lot of them in group three. You can also move vocals between different groups, just click and drag, and you can rename groups. Say I want to call group three background vocals, no problem. The final feature I want to look at is the note stabilizer. So up until now, we've mostly been using this in low latency mode, so you could use this for tracking. But if we turn on this, there is some latency added to the plugin, which will automatically be handled by your DAW. So don't worry about tracks being pushed out of time or any anything like that. So what this does is tries to stabilize a note if you've got some sort of fast moving notes or transition notes in your melody. So if you set it to short, it means that Metatune will not correct any of the notes shorter than 40 milliseconds, mid is shorter than 80, and then long means that it won't be correcting notes longer than 200 milliseconds. And the main purpose of this is to stabilize those notes to prevent any fluttering when you have those shorter notes in your melody. Take a quick listen to how the start of this melody flutters around a little bit without the note stabilizer, and then how that's taken care of. So let's start without. And even though I'm not alone right now, it's just not the same. And then if I turn it on. And even though I'm not alone right now, it's just not the same. It just takes care of that little sort of flutter, that little instability at the start of the melody, because you're telling Metatune sort of what to look for. And what I like about this feature is that it basically has removed the need for me to use one of those graphical based uh, pitch correctors that you've seen me use in, in the past on this channel, which are excellent, but they just take so long manually pushing each note up and down because you can tell Metatune what to look for and what to basically ignore, it just means you have a lot more power and a lot more flexibility. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you need any more information, please do check out the description down below where I've added some more information about the plugin and where you can get your hands on it. But thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.